Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Peacekeeping Jamaica. Welcome to my channel. Sorry for the uh, early start, or should I say, the late start, wherever you are in the world. Now today, I'll be focusing on, who is this, Gypsy Boy Exotics? Hey, it's, okay, Sting, okay, okay. Uh, so here we are, we, for the next, uh, call it about 59 minutes. I'll be speaking to you with regards to the topic. Uh, is it a hobby or is it money? Right? No, first I must say, uh, I think it was on Friday, I released a video, and the video was uh, saying that I'm done. Uh, as a teacher, I learned that I must always make my lessons interesting. So, as a result, what's up uh everything i know so as a result uh the topic was geared at getting your attention whilst it was not a clickbait but it actually sinks deep as to um persons just not wanting to you know continue because of very reason now in this video i shared with you some sentiments shared with me by other individuals now, uh, some persons had it that I was getting off YouTube. Uh, I must make that correction. I'm not going anywhere. I'll be on YouTube uh, as long as it allows me to be on YouTube. Right? Uh, okay, cool. Now, I'll be doing a, a video next week where I'll be looking at why, why, why you got suspended, right? uh stingray boy experienced that pleco whisper ex experienced that and several other fish keeping farm members have actually experienced that so i'll be looking at that uh in the course of the week All right so my topic is money uh hobby now when i first started out uh high protein nice to see you brother uh i saw you in the in the mark mark thingy you know you're mad you look cool uh so here here looking at money or hobby right when i started out I'm, I'm being honest here when i started out my 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 fish keeping experience I, I i wanted to keep fish because i love fish right and then after going out to the different pet shop uh trying to you know get some really nice colored fish i realized that hey i can do this meaning that I can actually, um, you know, rear some fish and, and, and keep some fish and, and sell some fish because the opportunity was there. So as a result of that, one aquarium lead to another pond, lead to another aquarium. So therefore, it, it gradually builds. So over time, I started to, you know, keep fish and I would periodically sell it to the pet shop. Now, that's, that's the honest thing that actually overtook me as far as fish keeping right so here i i i i you know sell goldfish live bears which was awesome okay so after a while i it, it kind of get a little bit strenuous on me in the sense that i would like sell like a, a fish to a pet shop let's say i sell a guppy to a pet shop and the the pet shop would want like 50 dollars for it okay sell it for 50 dollars and this is just an example by the way and uh at the you know we like when i will, will come back probably about two three days i would see that same copy that i sold to the pet shop being sold for like 200 dollars and i'm like but i got 50 dollars why not they never give me 100 dollars and at least split it, split it, split it, split it. right so I, I realized that this this was like not really my my error I, I just wanted to just enjoy myself keeping fish and have a peace of mind right so money was not option at that point in time so i i, I left that and i i just started to keep fish because i love it and uh strange enough 
uh, as I said in a video before, right? Uh, I'm coming to that everything I know. I'm coming to that. I'm coming to that. So I usually watch the, the, the brothers. I think it's a brother in a um, tank. The series on, on, on National Geographic channel. I usually watch it like every, I think you know Thursday or Wednesday night. It usually come on. I usually watch that very very often. And every Sunday I would watch uh, uh DIY King as he presents certain things. So therefore I said that to myself that listen, I can I can keep fish not necessarily to sell but just you know just for my upliftment. So I I just started to collect some uh what I call it tubs, and I started to set them up in such a way. And persons like it. Uh, periodically, I still sell fish, but uh, it is not as how it was before. So uh, somebody came to me. I met somebody, and and they said, "Hey, I'm on YouTube. I do here, and you can do such and such and such and such." So I said, "Okay, let's let's uh, gypsy. I am coming to that argument. Just bear with me." Okay, so. I started, you know, based on that encouragement, I started to uh, do YouTube. And to me, at first, it it was fun. And then it become crappy because the, the, the quality video, I, I never really understand some dynamics of it. Ah, so I started to do that. You know, after having so many containers, roughly I have about 19 containers, right? Six aquariums and one in-ground pond. So you can do the maths with that. That is what I have right now. So I, I've been keeping fish. I, I have over probably about 20 different type of fish within my system, right? Uh, hi, down the, down the, down the wormhole. Nice to see you, right? Um, so I, I, I start to know, hey, listen, let me do some reading and do some experimentation and probably share what I've discovered, share what I've experienced on YouTube. Thus, my channel is more like an educational um, base, right? So it's not generally to, hey, I'm, I'm selling this, come and buy that other fish from me. There's nothing wrong with that, but that's just not me, right? And it would be very difficult too because I live in Jamaica, in the Caribbean, and it's not that easy, like in America, Canada, or, 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 or England, to actually ship fish from one area to the next. You have a lot of paperwork and all that. I can't be bothered with that, bearing in mind that I have a nine to five job, plus I have a family, right? So that was just not mine right now. So I'm I'm, I'm here, I'm, I'm making aquariums, I'm making ponds, I'm breeding fish, and it's a hobby, right? And where it becomes strenuous is when you have uh, so many fish to feed, and each fish, each fish, right, requires different levels of feed. It requires different type of feed. Requires different types of care and an environment that is conducive for them to actually grow healthy and strong. Now, there is nothing wrong with you doing fish keeping for money. There's nothing wrong with you pushing forward on your channel for persons to to actually you know watch your videos be enticed with your videos and wanting to be a part of that right i don't see generally i don't see nothing wrong with that right uh the issue is when when do you decide that you're going to be moving from the hobby to the business uh so you have your grocery bill and then you have the the bill that takes care of the house, the light, the water, all that. And then you have your hobby bill, right? Now, to me, whenever your hobby actually overrides uh, your, your family expenses, I think it should be earning your money. What do you think? So therefore, you have the light and you have the water. Plus, it takes a lot of time. And a lot of the fishes that are kept are expensive. So if the fish do die, you either gonna forget about keeping those fish or you're gonna replace them, right? Uh, money or hobby? Uh, that's a ticklish question. Uh, persons actually look at YouTube 
as a guiding post as to whether or not they should keep this fish or that fish. And a lot of persons uh, use YouTube medium so as to catapult them into uh, becoming business entrepreneurs. So you would have your channel as soon as you reach 4,000 uh, hours watch time, as soon as you reach 1,000 uh, uh, subscribers, as soon as you reach 10,000 views, you start to get a little change in your pocket probably about uh, $2 US per view, right? So therefore, if you get 10,000 view, and, and it depends pertaining to the size. They have different, you know, regulations and all that. And it's, I, I can't go through right now because I haven't read all of it, fine print, right? But it is time consuming. So I find myself on Sundays actually uh, dedicating several hours to making videos, taking care of my fish, and communicating with my family on the fish farm um, community, right? Uh, let me see what everybody is saying. Okay, uh, Gypsy Boy, he lost his channel again. And I guess one of the reasons why he lost his channel is because he did not adhere to the rules of YouTube. And that's a common thing because sometimes we tend to do that as YouTubers, but I will not go into that right now because I, I intend to do a video on that. And uh, if I do go in that, I will probably expose my hand as to what I'll be doing. So uh, that's it regarding that, all right, Gypsy Boy? All right, so uh, what is your opinion about transforming, or should I say, moving from a hobby to earning some monies? Because, uh, to tell the truth, it, it is expensive to actually uh, make aquariums. The glass is expensive. The silicone is expensive. Time is like priceless, right? And uh, mistakes are made and glass break and, you know, fish die. Like, you, you don't have any feeling what you're going to be doing. You know, how are you going to generate the income so as to take care of the fish stock that you have that, that that's a question that uh a lot of females ask their husbands or their their, their partner with regards to uh you are having so much fish in the house you getting any money from it yeah that's a primary question that has been asked over and over and over and over again uh yes trading fish at the pet shop for food or you know store credit to me I don't do to I'm, I'm not really fond of that because what it does it eliminates the choice in which you have so as to spend wherever you want and to actually get the monies in your hand so as to you know feel good uh, I don't know how many persons have done this but the first paycheck they, they get some persons frame it some persons take picture with it some persons you know do a lot of things with it Right, because that's the first money, and 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 as I said before, um, it's encouragement. Uh, there's a saying in Jamaica which says, "Oh, this is not J. Um, Gypsy. Um, this is this is uh uh Rally from Fishkeeping Jamaica." All right, uh, logic here. What you must understand is that the heights by great men, rich and kept, were not attained by sudden flight, but they while their companions slept, were toiling upward through the night. That's a, a saying that we learn in Jamaica in like basic school going up to primary school. And as it as it relates to a uh, hobby and money, you no, know, sometimes we tend to overshadow our desire of earning money that we neglect the hobby that we so do like in a sense that we are so into making money that our fish stock are not being taken care of properly right now what i tend to do what i try to do is to make all of my videos on sundays so i will make like two hours worth of videos or one hour worth of video for uh, for a week right and then no it's on different different things and then no out of that i will do a summary 
uh, of the different things in which I'm doing, and it will be uploaded uh, based on schedule system on you know on, on on YouTube, right? So as a result of that, I am not really pressured each day to make a video and upload. That is done one day, right? So the theme is there, and you know all that. So let's get back to my topic as to money and hobby. Now, uh, several persons, uh, I think Jaden, J A D R E N, Jaden, I can't pronounce that word properly, right? He he thought that I was, you know, I was quitting because I was making money on my channel. That is not my primary thing right now. My primary thing is just to be happy and to share my knowledge and fish keeping. Now, uh, if it is believed that uh, Rally is on YouTube to just make money and, and, and not, you know, produce quality video, well, that's sad, right? My thing is make quality video, produce quality um, information, and whenever the rewards come, enjoy. But the rewards are not thought of first. The, the enjoyment in which, uh, you know, the whole thought process comes with, that is what is there first. Now, it is expensive in fish keeping. This is not a fallacy. This is not a joke. This is not something that should be high, right? Or should be hidden, should I say, English language, right? Uh, the thing is, it, the electricity is expensive. As of uh, Friday, uh, in Jamaica, one US dollar is valued at uh, 134 Jamaican dollars and some cents, right? That means 100 US dollars is roughly 13,700 and something dollars, right? So, hi, DK. Uh, thank you for joining my chat, right? So, it's not that cheap. Unlike America, which has reserve in natural gas and, and, and probably coal and, and, and oil, crude oil, Jamaica has to purchase all source of energy except for the sun and the wind and the water in which they use as renewable energy right from overseas so as a result of this water and electricity is expensive right hey the cove nice to see you thanks for joining right so as a result of that uh things are not as easy in jamaica as in other parts of the world so my wife and I was discussing today, uh, you know, different type of fish and you know, the, the whole idea of where they actually origin. And um, we look at, we were looking at Arowana and she she's helping me behind the scenes. She I've actually done a little reading and found that Arowana fish, in which I'll go deeper in this uh, probably in subsequent videos, right? But Arowana fish, uh, the, the origin of this fish is at a point where in which persons are actually fighting, like yeah, with, not necessarily civil war, but it is unrest. And one of the reasons why arowanas are expensive uh, ranges up between three hundred to seven hundred and a thousand US dollars is that the risk in which one takes so as to get these fish. And persons do buy these fish for this amount of money, right? Oh, Gypsy Boy, yes, man, I know that you're from the UK, right? Persons do buy these fish for this amount of money. And uh, and, 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 and they, they insure the, the fish and they do spend time taking care of the fish. Uh, and they purchasing these fish are not necessary for, for money but just because they love the hobby, right? And you have other fish that are also expensive, sea fish that are expensive, right? Persons have them in the aquarium. You have persons who have shark in an aquarium and, and it's expensive. You imagine you have to get um thousand pounds of meat or uh, type of fish so as to um maintain that that, that species of fish. I'm, I'm watching, I'm, I'm looking at what DPK, DPK is saying. Yes, that's so true, DVK. Uh, Arowana is a 
expensive to take care of when it reach a certain size, right? And so you can then probably cheap for about probably about 200 US dollars at this or 300 US dollars at this, right? And as they get big, they go up to probably about uh, 3.5 um, foot long, right? The longer they get, the more you're going to have to spend to take care of them, right? Uh, I'm saying this is that not everybody who is on YouTube who actually highlights their fish are in it for money, right? Many persons are there, are here on YouTube just to highlight what they have. Why is it might look as if they are boasting or showing off what they have, in which I think that some some persons are, right? If you get, I, I think I think some persons are, you know, really really, old, you know, going over, right? O overdoing it, right? With regards to their fish species, what they have, and you know, all of this. But I think that some persons generally love fish, right? The curve. Right, uh, and, and and regardless of how you might feel right now, you know you you want to earn some money. You have to think about the whole passion of it. To me, everything I know. To me, if you don't love something, it don't make no sense that you you participate in it. For example, I've been a teacher for twenty two years. For 22 years, I've been in the classroom. And for 22 years, I've been at the same school. And for 22 years, I've been at the same department, right? And one of the reasons which uh, actually caused me to be in this, you know, this position where I'm at uh, with regards to work is because I like to talk to people. I like the whole idea of, of, of sharing information. And I like the whole idea of actually having a sense of conversation where I learn from people and people learn from me, right? So as a result of that, we both go. And I feel really awesome, awesome good, if there's any such phrase, right? When uh, I see my students 15, 16 year ago, years ago who have actually left the school, um, see me in an office, you know, I go to an office to do business and they say, hey, uh, sir, remember? And I say, yeah, man. Or whenever I go, I'm driving on the road and somebody will drive up beside me or when the police or the soldiers stop me and, you know, and they say, hey, it's a, oh, yes, yeah, sir, oh, go on. And the conversation is there. And, and, as, and many of the times, uh, as a result of my profession, I don't get no ticket because they know me. Hey, you, you, because, yeah, because, because the passion is there. I am there, right? Uh... I'm trying to, oh, what's up, Brendan? I know that you had promised that you would be there, and I'm so grateful that you kept your promise, right? So, um, we're talking about the whole idea of fish keeping, hobby. You're doing it for hobby, are you doing it for money? I mean, a lot of persons have actually entered into the fish keeping, you know, family because they love it and a lot of persons have actually od meaning they overdo it i mean they they would actually sell their house in which they are at right now so as to get a bigger house so that they can make a fish room right um bearing in mind that they have expenses that will come with that right and a lot of persons don't think about that right because even the the air pump that you use to provide oxygen for your aquarium it uses electricity and you might be amazed to know how much electricity uh these systems actually use right um fish keeping is really a passion and and, and that's one of the reasons why i listen to persons like um aquafunk slash angel free right because he's very passionate about uh his fish and if you have been following his channel you will see his video where he was like about to cry <laughs> because his angel fish actually died he, he, he was like shipping it and and, and it died right and um and, and I, I watched rob 93 because he is like he's there in the fish keeping thing 
and he is like, hey, I don't know when I get so you know, I, I'm just like, he's there, right? And and you have and his angel, he he is a person who is just going up big, right? Uh, but I, I watch this channel, right? I was down the down the down the worm hole and 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 some other channels in which I if I try to call them name no probably we get in a problem, right? But yes, it is. Yes, that's true. Um, the other day, oh, by the way, in Jamaica right now, we are actually getting the effects of tropical storm depression. I don't know which number it is, but I know that its name is Leslie. Last weekend, it was um, tropical depression, Kirk. Uh, two weeks ago, it was tropical depression. Uh, I don't remember the name, but this week is tropical depression, Leslie. And as you can see in the background, the place is like dark, right? Really dark because not much sunshine have been up for morning. My wife have actually washed some clothes and, you know, hoping that the sun will come up to, you know, get them dry. Uh, we don't really fancy the whole idea of having dryers because dryers use a lot of electricity. Unlike in America where electricity is cheap, in Jamaica, as I said before, it's not, right? Uh, it's a hobby. And if the hobby brings some, some, some benefit, I think you should grab it. But I don't think the primary thing, everything I know, and EPK, and Redneck, I don't think the primary thing, if you're in the hobby, if you're on YouTube, if you're like, you know, that person who just started a channel for, you know, you want a person to get, you want to get popular. You either want business through sales or you want business through YouTube, actually paying you to do videos. I think it, 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 it dwells deeper than that. Um, what you must understand that sometimes you end up, you crash and you burn, right? Uh, one thing I try not to do is to burn out myself in regards to, uh, fish keeping uh, my channel, right? And DPK uh, suggested the other day, I guess he misinterpreted the video, right? Uh, that I can take some time if I want to and just rest and relax. Sometimes I do that, but probably you don't know because what I do DPK is that, what I do DPK is that I would do videos for like, right now I have about 13, 14 videos. Right, and these videos go up until probably about the twenty fourth of uh of October, right? And every morning or every evening you will see a video come out, right? And for those two weeks, if I want, I can just sit back. Uh, my thing is that I try to answer all the comments. So probably through that medium, you might feel as if that I am you know actively you know on YouTube doing things, but that's just my thing. I, I try to answer. Right, I try to respond to comments, right? Uh, but I do take break. I, 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 for when, when I was away for the summer, what I did was to do probably about 24 videos before I left, right? And then when I was away, I did probably about 10 or probably about 15, right? And they were lined up. to and, and if you notice, some of these videos are just coming out, and some of them have not yet. Um, they're not finished, right? I have a probably about three or four more videos in which I did when I was in New York, right? But the thing is that I do take breaks, and and these breaks help me to, in retrospect, look at where I'm at, look at where I'm going, uh, look at what I need so as to grow my channel, right? Yes, it's a hobby. Yes, you spend a lot of time and a lot of money. That is not my priority. However, I'm not going to tell any lie to say that I would not take some means of reward for the work that I've been doing over the past couple of years or months, right? There's nothing wrong with that. However, when, to me, when your primary objective is to get some subscribers, get watch time, get viewers, 
you find that, as I think DPK mentioned it slightly a while ago, you find that the quality of video actually depreciate. And you can see a sense of void within the, the, the video as it is produced and, and, and persons actually watch it. Right? Um, so, Gypsy Boy, I think, and, 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 and I hope I'm not coming over too forceful, but listen, if you want to go your channel, and this is an advice from me to you, although I should do this by email, right? If you want to go your channel, spend time and do quality videos, right? Look at other individuals' channel, take some hints from them, uh, converse with them, uh, if possible, have some collabs with them, put yourself out there for persons can know you. It might take a while for persons to accept your friendship, but once you're doing quality videos, persons have no problem. Everyone here, everyone here, Gypsy, uh, started at zero subscriber, right? And some persons are, have actually outpaced some persons. Some persons are moving like, uh, what you call it, like the turtle, right? Slow and steady win the race. Some persons are moving like the, the rabbit, right? Swift like that, right? So it's to everyone, as we would say in Jamaica, to everyone, good day, partner, and more. To everyone, as we would say in Jamaica, to each his own. So what DPK might do so as to make his his hobby into probably a business in the next five years, right? Probably uh, Aquafunk might do something different. And within two years, he might just uh, you know become more prolific in 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 in, in the, the hobby on YouTube than than DPK. But that doesn't mean that DPK was working. It's just that. He has his own style. And persons, um, as you say in Jamaica, again, persons have different swag. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to read what DPK and Gypsy is actually saying with regards to play cup reading. Okay. I have some 15 inches common play cup in my, in my pond. Right, and uh, I have had them for about uh, from 2016. I got them from about three inches, yeah, from about three inches, about three inches. I got them about three inches, right? Three inches, about the length of my, my finger, and now they are about 15, 15 inches, 15, 16 inches, and they have not bred as yet. But I understand that it takes some time for common players to be. Um, Bushy nose preco is a total different thing. Uh, they breed uh, easier than common preco. It's a whole dynamics of breeding common preco than you know bushy nose, right? You have to do a lot of replication. Uh, as DVK says, you have to uh, replicate, uh, trying to imitate the the, the natural environment. Uh, Put a lot of mud at the base of the aquarium or tank. Mud wearing it probably about three or four or five inches thick. Where the plecos can actually dig their own hole. Uh, put some pipe in it. What I do, I use uh, I use cinder blocks. So I put cinder blocks in it. I have some stuff in it, and they are there. And uh, because I know that they are not all that, they don't, they don't really fancy mosquito like that. I actually put some live beers to swim on the top. In which I do a video on that. Uh, why do some fish swim on the bottom, the middle, and the top? I do that in a short bit, right? Uh, okay. So everything I know is advising Gypsy Boy as to which channel to check out, so as to find out how to best breed pleco. Everything I know is that common. Common. Pleco, uh, bushy nose pleco, because I have some common pleco like this. Very big. 
and, and they would sit and they would hide for the entire day. But in the night, when I use a flashlight and look into the pond, they are there. They just the face just big and fat like a frog. I actually ran there the night because I saw one. I thought it was a frog who actually jumped in the pond. I don't like frogs, right? Uh, okay, cool. So here now we're talking about hobby, right? And 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 the whole idea of of earning money. Now in the hobby. You need to think about electricity, water, and light. I mean, electricity, water, and, and feed, sorry. Right? And it is not cheap. So what I tend to do, I tend to make my own feed with regard to my fish. So I will use my cuttings for my vegetable, especially like today, Sunday, vegetable, uh, the cuttings, the, the lettuce, the cabbage, the carrot, right? And I will put it into a container, and I think, both myself and Rob Nancy did a video on homemade food versus manufactured food. So you can check out that on my channel, right? Uh, and I will put it in the sun and it will stay there for the entire week. And then I will use that next week to, to feed my fish outside, not inside, because it has a funky smell. So is it is there anything wrong with you, actually? Uh, I, I want you to know. I want you to tell me. Is there anything wrong, DPK? Quick curse. Nice to see you, right? Uh, for one, quick curse. I'm, I'm, I'm responding to quick curse now. Quick curse. What type of fish were you thinking of? Are you thinking of live bearers or are you thinking of other type of fish? Because you see, some fish, well, all fish starts out very small and goes very large. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm making reference to quick curse for those persons who are wondering where I'm at, right? Uh, some, some fish goes very fast, while some very slow. For example, if you have a Jack Dempsey fish, cichlid, um, born today, and an Oscar born tomorrow, right? You will find that Okay, cool, cool, cool. Everything I know, that's awesome. Okay, okay, cool. Uh, all right. The Oscar will go to a massive size of about eight inch or more within nine months. It might take a Jack Dempsey three to four years to grow to that size. The Jack Dempsey will grow and it will stuck at probably about four or five inches for a very long time, and then if given the amount of space, if given the amount of space, if given the amount of space, it will shoot up. Because remember, these fish, they go to a massive 13 to 14 inches. Hi, Lisa, Lisa Aquatics. Nice to see you. Uh, today we're talking about uh, uh, hobby, uh, money. Uh, Lisa, looking at your fish keeping experience, what comes to your mind first when thinking about keeping fish? Is it the the the, the, uh, the whole idea of having a hobby, just like how you'd have a dog or a cat, or is it like earning money? You you you're going to this thing with the headspace that you're going to buy some um blue rams and with my male and females. And this time next year, you're supposed to have fries and you can sell them for a good amount of money over the internet. I can use that and pay a light bill going forward. Um, what do you think, Lisa, or anybody else out there? Is that your priority with regards to fish? Mark you, there's nothing wrong with that because keeping fish, keeping some fish requires a lot of money. I shared with you before that I purchased some uh blue dolphin and they die right and these blue dolphins are not cheap right but i purchased them really intense and i will keep them to see how big they can get and if i end up with a cup with a peer i would breed them and i will sell them now i understand the reason why they are expensive because they are hard to take care of right so 
you see a fish in the pet shop and you wonder why is it that this fish is selling for four hundred and ninety nine dollars, while another fish is might be selling for probably about five dollars or nine dollars. Uh, it is obvious, right? Right? Arm um, protein. It is obvious that the fish requires oh, uh, like intricate care. I say love and affection, so as to ensure that it's you know it it it, it, it it's growth as well. I'm trying to read the comments on the screen, so bear with me as I pause. Okay. Okay. So Lisa is saying that to her is like a luxury. So so Lisa, in a sense, you are doing it, but you are doing it not really for really really for my conclusion, not really with in mind to say, boy, listen, I'm gonna do this to get some money. But you are doing it, and if money comes, money comes, right? And you find that when you do that, you enjoy a little bit more. Well, you enjoy that a lot more, right? You enjoy the hobby when you are so loving it. It's like, uh, I would say, to people out there who engage in different type of work. Because, you know, as I, as I say, I'm a teacher for X amount of time, right? Uh, persons who are out there, it, it, it makes no sense that you are employed, or should I say, you are working at an establishment. Uh, I want, uh, Brian, nice to see you, Ross. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, nice to see you, brother. Respect. It is... Really, really a waste of time for you to be engaging in any form of employment, knowing that you don't like the boss, you don't like the job, you're just doing it just to take care of your family. You find that the passion that will be needed so as to get the work done properly, you find that the passion is not there. So at times you tend to make mistakes. Or it is just, I call it now, um, the motions going through. But when you find yourself in a career or in a job that you actually have the passion for, you find that even when things are not going your way, even when things seem as if it's difficult, you're, you're at a chokehold as to what to do next, you find that you try to be innovative, creative, right, so as to go forward, right? So I think that, I think that that's exactly with fish keeping. I'm trying to look at. Oi. I'm trying to look at um what some persons have been saying in the conversation. Okay. Uh, I guess I guess they're talking about uh some aquarium and filtration and thing, right? Okay. Cryptocurrency for 20 gallon, I would put some live bearers in it. I wouldn't put in a cichlids because a cichlids, one, the cichlid would uh, result in a lot of waste. Because if, I think I said this already, but cichlids tend, well, all egg laying fish poop more than live bearers. All egg laying fish poops more than live bearers. So therefore, if you have a set of egg laying fish in one aquarium, and you have some live mirrors in one aquarium, you're gonna find that you're gonna to need to actually maintain one of the aquariums more than the other because you're gonna end up with a lot of poop. Oh, another question is I should ask, as I see Gypsy Boy um mentioned that. Uh, I have some Severums, although I have a video coming out on that next week. Uh, does Severums actually consume their own eggs or fries, or do they actually take care of them like you would have the Jack Dempsey and the, the convict does? I want someone to hit me up and tell me uh, that, right? Uh... Oh, Lisa, yes, your tiger barbs and all barbs, including Tetra, will eat their eggs as soon as they lay it. So that's the reason why I tend to have what I call a breeding basket, where in it I will put the, the fish in the breeding basket. Once I see the tummy full of like, as if it's going to push out the egg, I will get a meal 
I would get the, the fish into a breeding basket, put it in an aquarium by itself, the male and the female, and give it probably about a day or two, looking at it periodically. And what will happen is that they will go around and he will actually hit the eggs out of the, the female. And as soon as it seems as if all eggs are out, you will take out the fish, take out the breeding basket, and only use a sponge filter or air pump hose in that aquarium and put the fish now into a different aquarium or tank and you'll find that those fish will be okay. Now, what you would do also, Lisa, is that you will look, watch the eggs. Uh, matter of fact, if you really want all the eggs, as soon as, it, it, when it, you would have to plan for this, right? As soon as you put them into the breeding basket and the eggs are out and you take them out, you get methane blue, it's one teaspoon for one teaspoon for every 10 gallon right so it depends on the side of the aquarium you have right lisa and then now you would uh matthew nice to see you and then now you would put the one teaspoon per 10 gallon into the aquarium and after methane blue and that will help to preserve the eggs however if you see any white egg at all eggs look really white because the eggs are going to be look it should look a little glossy you know like glass glass very shine right if the eggs doesn't look glossy that means it was not fermented meaning um it, it, the sperm the mint from the fish did not hit it so therefore if you can you can actually try to remove those eggs whether it be by siphoning or by just using a small spoon to just flick it up because what will happen is that these spoiled eggs will end up uh causing the other eggs to get damaged right all right cool thank you matty moore right matty moore is an, another awesome fish keeper ladies and gentlemen i encourage you to check out his channel he is a simple a very simple person but he knows his stuff and you should go and check out his channel all right now uh so 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 lisa if you want if you want to breed tetra and 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 and, and the barbs, you'll have to do this, right? Now, regardless of how large the aquarium is, or large the pond is, or large the system is, they will consume the egg. This is just their thing. Because remember, um, barbs and tetra are from areas which a lot of stones are in the the, 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 what call it? the river stream, the, 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 the bed, right? And because it is big, as soon as they lay the egg, they will eat what they see, and then they will move down the stream. But you can't do that with your uh, grab, a fill, grab, grab a substrate because what will happen is that even if the egg is in between the, the, the stone, what will happen is that as soon as the fries become free, free swimming, the adults will actually chase down those fries and consume them. Because remember, whether or not they are omnivore, herbivore, or carnivores, they will consume anything that moves and can fit in their mouth. All right. To have babies fertilized. Uh, okay. Uh, yes, methane blue. That's true. Um, DBK. Methane blue will. Methane blue will actually uh, damage the beneficial bacteria. But what I tend to do, I tend to, as soon as the fries are free swimming, right? I would now change the water. I will now change the aquarium. And I will put the fries into a what I call it, a conditioned space for them to actually, you know, go right. And then now I will have a clean aquarium to probably start something else, right? Too much methane blue. Well, too much methane blue is bad. One and two, um, methane blue can actually cause the fish to become deformed. And the fish can die because it stays in it too long. However, it helps the fish, the egg, to stay um, healthy um, during the, during those three or four days when it when it hatches and it will start free swimming, right? But this is what this is what this is what I do. Uh, the last time I got about 200, 200 uh, filament barbs, yeah, filament barbs. But uh, I did something bad and all of them died. They were about probably about three or four inches like this in a big pond around the back. I think it was a Jack Dempsey pond. No, the convict pond they were in. Right. Um, I actually was there fooling around the pond 
wondering if I should clean it. And I had a, oh God, I had a stick checking to see the depth of the waste in it because you know they they, they start over very fine. So therefore, I was I was a little bit hesitant to actually clean it because they were very fine in the big pond, right? But um, you were going on good. And the Saturday night, I took the stick and I was checking. So I ended up storing up the gas that was below the, the pond, right? And in the morning, I woke up all of the fish was dead because what happened is that the gas, yeah, the gas, I don't know what you call it, it is methane or whatever, right? The gas actually came up from the field that all of those filth that was beneath, right? It came up in the pond water and it just stifled all of the fish, regardless of the, the filtration system what was in it, just came up and it just stifled them and they all died. Uh, 300 and 11 bars. So I, I, it's the first I'm talking about this literally for real. But, um, you know, as I said before, I am not perfect. I, I, I do things and things happen, but, um, you know, I, I learn. Right, and uh, it's a learning curve, and 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 it's a very good when you have fish farm members, a community, should I say, who actually you know share their ideas because some things that uh you might share with me, although not to say that I'm I'm in the fish keeping hobby 10 20 years, like probably some of you, right? But I know some things that you share with me, I learn from. And something that I share with you, I know that you uh, you learn from also because you're like, hey, I never think of that. And some persons are like, you know, the reverse. So it's very awesome, right? All right, probably that's it. I, I'm, I'm trying to read what what has been the conversation on the on the on the on, on that, right? Yeah, Tetra, 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 um, DPK, you know, everything I know. I I actually bred some Tetra and I I had a probably about 50 of them. But uh, they died in, 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 in during the, the growth stage. I probably might have about, probably about 10 now, right? But they are very big now, right? And they are in one of my ponds up the back. I have actually tried to breed them again, but um, the eggs are always coming out white. So, um. I'm just leaving that alone for the time being. I'm trying to go over into cichlids to see how best my hand can work with that, right? So I presently I have uh, some Central American white Central American uh, convict Oscar Jack Dempsey, several mm -hmm, uh, Mingano, and uh, what's the blue one again? I think it's Demansoni, right? Oh, and Comites. So these are the these are the, the secrets in which I have right now. Uh, oh, yeah. And I have, I think I have one of those, I'm not sure which one of the peacocks, but I have the peacock with the blue head and the red body. I have a pair of that, right? So I'm, I'm getting there. Uh, DPK, where would you get that? Would you get that at the garden store or the pet shop? Uh, the thing about it, you know, is that, you know, and, and, and this is one thing about uh, discussing, uh, yes, that's Lisa. I, I like cichlids. I know why I like cichlids, Lisa. Cichlids actually, uh, well, not all cichlids, but they take care of the young, unlike many of the live bears in which I've, I've, I've experienced with. As soon as the baby comes out, they turn around and they consume them. But the cichlids, for the most part, um, even if it's for a couple of days or weeks, they really take care of the young, and, and that's that's one of the reasons why I really love cichlids, and I think that I would actually, you know, extend my hand to the whole idea of um, keeping um, several types of cichlids. Oh, baking soda. Oh, all right, brother. All right, you see, when I, when I talk local, I understand, but when they say that the whole chemistry thing, we never like chemistry. After my chemistry teacher tell me, they said, I have to go extra class. I'm going to tell him something now. Come down and he end up taking me out of the class. But see, here I am. I think he's 
probably be in a, some home or something like that. And then that's that's another side of life. All right. Um, so I'm just trying to read what's on the but it makes no sense you have a live stream. You're talking all the time and you're not really communicating with those persons in whom you are talking to. So I'm trying to see what everyone is saying. But oh everything I know. So you would use uh blue medic instead of methane blue because I know that once the egg becomes white, that's it. The egg is no good. Egg is no good. Okay. Yeah, um right now, well, I left six curry catfish in a pan outside. And last week I was searching for them. Because I wanted to know whether or not I had any females uh, in response to um, Lisa and the whole idea of catfish, right? Uh, and I only found, well, I have mud in the substrate, mud, mud dirt from my yard. I save it and I put it into the pond. And I know that they love that. So I, I've only found five. I don't know if I actually threw out any because I went down very, very low to the mud. And you know the the, the 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 pipe which actually takes the water from the container out into the yard it goes up to about probably about three or four inches from the from the base. So I would now have to take a container and scoop out the water between three and four inches from the base. So I don't know if I accidentally threw it out or it actually died, but I don't know. I just find five, and all five curry fish that I have looks like a male and how i know that's a female no female is there i mean because all of them look slim slender usually catfish with a curry cat or whatever the females are usually a little bit more plucky than the males the males are usually a little bit more muscular yes but skinny all right but that's what i use for my curry catfish and um, curry catfish is uh i call it now it's like a Oh, curry catfish is uh, uh people that say it's rare, right? So when you go into the pet shop, I said I think I said it in our video. When you go into the pet shop and you see curry catfish, you better have the money for buy it. Same time because even if you go to machine to draw the money and come back, chances are the curry catfish uh might be gone. Persons are like wanting it like that. And at one point in time, them and Sonys were like that. But I realized that persons are now um, breeding them and Sonys in Jamaica. So as a result of that, um, they're more available, although they're kind of expensive. But another expensive cichlid is the blue dolphin. Uh, another, I think, is good too. Fast, yeah, fish at least once a month. Oh, I think it's too good. Oh, oh, fast. Oh, you mean like don't feed them at least once a month? What I do, what I do, what I do, um, DPK, with regards to my fish, I usually feed them every single night, once time, one time per day, right? But um i usually feed them one time per day but since i've been away and i've returned i just continue the cycle of feeding them every other day so um so as to you know not to break that cycle because for about six weeks i've been feeding them every other day right uh -huh. so it it's it, it, it's it's like that and because they're in the pond what you find what i find is that they are innovative to find those microorganisms that lives on the plant. And I realized that because I'm not feeding my koi and my goldfish every day like before, they are now consuming, I don't know if it's a microorganism on the roots, I don't know if it's Daphne on the roots, I don't know what, but they are actually consuming the roots of my hyacinth lily. Uh, Okay, so I am about to leave. This is about an hour. 
I never intended to go so long. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, for joining my live stream. I appreciate it. I hope that our dialogue here was of good use and uh, you are now more decisive is whether or not uh, your fish keeping is for money or hobby. Join me next time. Do have an awesome day. Blessing. Yeah, man. Cool. Bye-bye, everybody. Peace. Really, Jamaica. I.